Welcome to day five. My name is Sarah Rosenthal, and today we are going to be talking about the self-existence of God. Before we begin, take a moment to read this verse. I wonder if you've ever had a moment where you feel small. I have this feeling every time that I look up at the night sky. To see the massive, what feels unending sky open up above me and see the stars appear as if from nowhere the longer I look up. It makes me feel about two inches tall, but honestly, in the best way. It makes me think about God and how big he must really be and how much I don't understand him. When I look at the sky, it looks like it is everlasting. It looks like it simply will never end. And yet, all of creation, even the parts that are hard for my eyes and my mind to take in and understand, are simply a result of the one who created it all. The one whose name is above every other name. I am. To be honest, the idea of the self-existence of God, to me, has the same amount of mystery as when I look into the night sky. It's one of those things that quite simply blows our minds because it creates a new concept and category in our mind that nothing else fills. God, being self-existent, means that he is unlike anything we know. He is set apart all by himself. There is no one like him. He is I am. He is the only one who has no origin, no beginning or end, not created, but just is, was, forever, will be. We see God calling himself this for the first time when he talks with Moses in Exodus 3, 13 through 14. Moses had just received his call to serve God through bringing his people out of Egypt. And when Moses asks who he should tell the people sent him, God tells him, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God is revealing to Moses who he is and the credibility he has as I am. And this is one of those things that makes God, God and us, us. I don't know about you, but when I get to a point where I don't understand something and feel like I've tried to explain it or tried to wrap my head around it and still can't, I tend to want to tap out. In our reading for today, Tozer discusses this on page 26, if you want to dive in deeper. He says, we don't find it comfortable and we tend to be disquieted when we think about God as being self-existent, self-dependent, and self-sufficient. Uncomfortable may be one word to describe it. Incredibly humbling and convicting could be others. We tend to walk around with the facade of control and understanding. We present our problems to God and demand answers. We want him to fit into the boxes we create for him. We want to know the end, but we aren't promised those answers. We are promised God. I am the one who is above all and in all. And I have found that each time I've put God in a box, he blows past anything I could have dreamed up. I tell myself I won't do it again, but then I'm faced with another obstacle and will put him right back inside of it. And I found myself back at that place, realizing that God is bigger than I ever thought or could imagine he was. There is humility that comes from these realizations, but the kind of humility and death to self that feels painful as we lay down our will and our dreams and our fears. But there's freedom on the other side of that surrender. Our identity comes into alignment with what we are created for and who created us. The self existence of God can feel like something that is really far away and distant and hard to comprehend. But the repercussions of this truth affect every aspect of our lives and our beings. It makes me think of a song that I've been listening to a lot recently. It's called Bigger Than I Thought by Sean Curran. And I wanna challenge you at some point today to listen to that song. 
whether it is on your way to school or work, while you make dinner, or as you fall asleep tonight. Take a couple of minutes to listen to this song and let the words wash over you. The line that sticks out to me each time I listen is, I will rest in the Father's hands. Leave the rest in the Father's hands. We can rest in the hands of our Father, the I am, the one who is bigger than we thought he was, the one who has proven to be faithful. We aren't promised all of the answers to all of our questions and longings and hurts, but we're promised him, I am. We can rest in his hands because like we read at the beginning in Psalm 90, from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. Rest in his hands today. <laughs>